Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having us today, everyone. Happy to be here and share with you a little bit about the Catalyzing Community Giving Village Reemergence Plan project. Um, we have requested funding to be used to build, acquire, and renovate vacant community buildings and predominantly BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and people of color neighborhoods for BIPOC Ellis, Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. I know you guys enjoy hearing that, ter that, that terminology. We love our, our, our acronyms over at United Way. <laughs> Um, but we're looking to uh, support BIPOC Alice residents in Battle Creek uh, around entrepreneurial incubation, workforce training support, um, economic barrier removal services, soft skills training, and uh, financial education support that intentionally complement uh, the work of our workforce development partners, our corporate partners, and United Way Alice Initiative. Now, this, this investment will also uh, support some data sharing dashboards uh, and, and partner dashboard integrations as a mechanism for community-wide data collection, synthesis, and analysis so that we can look forward to more rapid and reliable decision-making around our investments that are made, being made into our community's current and future workforce development efforts. Uh, this investment will be used to leverage additional philanthropic investments to secure full implementation of the village ecosystems and continue supporting successful uh, community outcomes with a focus on community economic development that increases the number of residents that participate in our local economy, economy ultimately increasing our local GDP. Um, one thing that we, we realize and, and acknowledge is that the conditions and assets in our community actually provide us an opportunity uh, to create a model with tools and frameworks that can be scaled to other communities. And just kind of thinking about that data, um, the, the project develops kind of a best practice model that's grounded in data used uh, statewide and uh, promotes uh, increased participation again, in our local and state economies. And when we look at our Alice data, Calhoun County actually has very similar statistics uh, for BIPOC Alice as the state. So given the potential $97.9 billion increase to Michigan's GDP, gross domestic product, if every household were above the Alice threshold, this project actually allows us to bring this to scale in our city that we can also support uh, at a statewide level uh, as we share across our United Way networks. Um, now, we do that by uh, basically building ecosystems that increase the number of sustainable jobs, uh, improves the quality of existing jobs, and improves, improves labor market labor outcomes for workers by applying cost benefit analysis and social rate of return. So moreover, um, the project really creates and increases the number of small businesses within BIPOC neighborhoods at or below the Alice threshold. Um, and, and we're looking at even a modest increase in that number um, created by existing uh, small business secures employment opportunities for the un or underemployed residents in our most marginalized communities. Um, now, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Will Fobbs, our ecosystem designer, uh, who is really working hand and very, very closely with uh, our community leaders, uh, our BIPOC leaders uh, that, that are leading in each of the many villages. And we do recognize the village, by the way, as being the entire city of Battle Creek, a network of our BIPOC uh, residents and leaders. Um, again, creating systems that are designed by and for uh, them to, to promote, uh, again, economic, economic development. Um, so with that, I, I'd like to turn it over to Will to speak a little bit more about that. And um, can I share my screen? Would it be possible for me to share my screen? You should be all set to go ahead and share. All righty. Okay, are you all seeing learning about uh, growing food indoors? 
Perfect. Okay, Will, I'll turn it over to you to speak a bit and, and then we can go into some questions. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, those of you uh, that have met me know that I'm fairly excitable and I'm excited about all the things that are happening within Battle Creek and uh, communities of color. Um, we actually had uh, some slides to kind of show you um, uh, kind of behind the scenes of what's happening in the community because yes, it's about the leaders and the cohort within uh, catalyzing community giving, but really it's about the residents. Um, it's about the youth, it's about our future. It's about reimagining um, and reemerging successfully. And so here uh, we actually have Jose and uh, actually uh, uh, youth and, and, and folks from the community visiting uh, the Potawatomi and their greenhouse, uh, learning uh, from our partners, learning of different ways to reimagine food and our food ecosystem. You know, when we think about economic development, um, for us, it's actually bigger than even just structures. Yes, that's a part of it, but really it's about our mindset and reimagining what that can look like. And, you know, as I started to think about what I was gonna say, uh, as I present to the commission, commissioners and everyone on this call, you know, I started to think about, you know, all the different areas and cross sections um, that are important to the work, um, whether that's actually helping to create careers as Nakia was highlighting, uh, workforce development training, uh, in culturally relevant spaces and places, um, or sometimes in this picture, this is actually uh, Pastor Bailey, who is actually what we call our elder statesman. And he was basically uh, uh, highlighting what happened at a gasoline station several months. Um, and, and he was saying, you know what, we've got to actually say this is not okay. He was really looking at our culture. Yes, culture in, the, in Washington Heights, yes, culture uh, in an area predominantly um, with predominant African American residents but also the culture of our city. How can we come together? How can we join hands and say, we're going to solve this together? And yes, it's gonna be bumpy sometimes and, and, and whatnot, but we actually are going to be very intentional about not giving up. And that's one thing that COVID has, I think, uh, highlighted for, at least for me, is that as a country, we're actually learning how to figure this out and almost learn how to share and work together as one. And so uh, the 846 uh, that he had in the sign, um, that would actually represent a group of the community that are saying, um, we actually really want to make sure that our culture not only is preserved, but thrives for our young people um, and those what I call our elder statesmen. The slide uh, here is actually uh, one of the folks that uh, is behind the scenes doing a great job uh, working with us. Um, and there's so many different uh, folks that, um, may not actually be in all the meetings, may not actually, uh, we see them, but they're very important to the work. And I wanted to highlight this because she's actually at the Burma Center where I'm at right now with Mayor Binky, uh, because uh, we actually have uh, a, a ribbon cutting uh, for a project that is actually not part of CCG, but is part of CCG. And I say that because we don't look at uh, individual projects as actually being separate because I consider this a movement. I consider it a movement throughout um, our whole community and region. And so here we were actually giving, uh, they were actually uh, administering uh, vaccine shots for COVID. And so the community came, we actually amplified, we did lots of different convenes, worked, uh, actually it was Grace Health and Bronson uh, working together. And I wanted to highlight that because it's a beautiful partnership of two different um, health systems working together for the greater good. And that's kind of the spirit and principle of what CCG is about. <clears throat> so, sorry, guys. <laughs> I just got a frog in my throat. And <clears> throat> sorry, oh, Nikita, why don't you highlight top? Oh, come off mute here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> go ahead. Cough, Will. It's okay. <laughs> it's nice to be able to tag team and have a partner that uh, we work so closely together with this group. And, but just to highlight Todd, you know, Todd has, is, is a leader. Uh, with the Burma Center, and um, one of the, the opportunities that this work has actually afforded us is to um, support Taz leadership in, in, in significant ways. Um, we were able to support a full-time salary uh, for Taz. Now, we all know, all of y'all know Taz, you know she's out here working full-time anyway, but she was not able to uh, earn a full-time salary uh, some time ago. And so this work is actually helping us to build capacity into our uh, BIPOC leadership 
so that they can expand their reach throughout community and uh, support the systems, the ecosystems that residents are, are sharing with us through community conversations that are really important to them. Um, what we're looking at is, is again, multiple mini, mini villages um, with, with um, trusted BIPOC leadership. Um, and we're looking at building mini villages that have all of the supports that residents indicate that this is what we want and need now. Uh, we look at the, the current needs and we also look at those uh, long-term uh, needs and supports. We do have a 2030 vision of uh, implementation and completion of this work. Um, and realistically, we're looking at a budget in the tens of millions. Uh, right now, again, this work is, is progressive, it's innovative in being, in, in, and it's being built by the voice of residents in real time. So um, projections, uh, we have to be very careful of. We are using um, strong data points as we uh, continue to make those projections, but before we publicize them, we definitely want to just be very mindful that we are uh, aligned with what we're hearing residents say. Will, it looks like you came back off mute, are you? I'm, I'm back, so yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, no worries. Excited uh, that I had to call. Uh, on the next slide, we actually show a, a gentleman, um, and I wanted to actually have a personal touch where he gave me permission for this, uh, and he actually was uh, not from this country, and was almost in tears because of the opportunity uh, that actually was uh, that transpired at the Burma Center. And I use the Burma Center as a use case because there are infrastructure needs and maintenance needs uh, that exist at the Burma Center. And our heart is to make sure that those actually don't happen so that Ta can actually run quicker, run faster, and continue to do the work that she's doing right now. And that's not just uh, the Burma Center, that's actually uh, at New Level Sports, that's actually with Urban League, and, and on and on throughout the entire cohort. And so it's really important for us to really think about that this is, has a personal touch to us. Yes, there is actually money associated with infrastructure. We understand that. But I always say that that's actually just the tip of the iceberg that we see. A lot of it actually is our culture. A lot of it is our principles. A lot of it's about who we want to be. This picture here is actually uh, the uh, large uh, cohort of the Latino community and uh, the leader of BOSIS, uh, Jose. Uh, and we actually visited uh, Southwestern. <clears throat> and we just imagined. We imagined what we could do uh, in our community to actually catalyze community giving and giving is not always about resources or money. Sometimes it's actually about volunteering. Sometimes it's about bringing your expertise. Sometimes it's just about spreading hope when you actually don't have $2 to rub together. There's lots of ways to catalyze community giving. In fact, from our principal standpoint, in order to catalyze community giving, you have to focus on economics. But if you're gonna focus on economics, you have to focus on education because we have to have a platform and a system that's sustainable for both now and into the long term. And, and then if you're really going to focus on education, you have to start looking at the family and basic needs. Because if, if I'm a child and I'm hungry, it's kind of hard to learn. If, 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 if things are actually messy at home and I'm actually dealing with trauma, it's hard to learn. And so we actually look at things like uh, basic needs. Uh, and Alyssa, I'm trying to give you a handoff. Uh, and, and also looking at where we're going. So we're making a sustainable ecosystem and sustainable ecosystems. And so, um, I guess, uh, Nakia, if you didn't have any other uh, comments, I just wanted to really kind of highlight here uh, how we're actually looking at this. We're not looking at this as, uh, as something that is, is just infrastructure, although it is. We're not looking at this as just a dashboard, although that it is. We're not looking at this just as workforce development, although it is, because we're all interconnected if we kind of look at it that way. We all actually have a part to play and a role to play. And so we look for partnerships, uh, all over, uh, from I call it from the street to the boardroom. And that's really important. We wanna make sure that if we're talking about affordable housing, that the community not only has their voice heard, but is part of actually the planning from get, from get go. We wanna make sure that the community actually uh, can chart their own path alongside with us as true partners at the table. And, and that's really important part of this work. So uh, just an honor to be able to speak uh, to all of you. Uh, it's an honor to be considered for this opportunity. Um, it's an, an honor to uh, obviously get to planning and get to writing. 
so I can present something, uh, what I call properly, because I didn't know we could present. And so uh, I just thank you. I did this on my phone. I just thank you guys so much. Uh, and uh, I'll turn it over to Nakia. Well, I'm going to turn over to Rebecca and the team. Do you all have questions or <laughs> feedback thoughts? Happy to answer questions. Yeah, and I just want to, commissioners, we are at 639 and I, I want to make sure that we keep moving. We've got another community partner. So do we want to ask questions or do we want to hold? That's up to you. Vice Mayor. And now the mayor is back, so I'll defer to him. Um, if we could just take a few minutes. Uh, I'm happy with the leadership um, that we've witnessed so far with the village. And I think that needs to be commended because uh, for a long time, we didn't have the people that were out there speaking. And I think that's re really remarkable. Uh, I know I'm very supportive of everything they're doing and I look forward to partnering with them even more. So let's take a few minutes. I see Commissioner Wilson has her hand up and if anyone else, let's just ch chime in. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Mayor. As someone who partners often with those the anchor institutions that have been referenced, VOSIS and Urban League and the Burma Center, I can uh, personally attest to how important the need was that they be supported, not just in the ways that we're talking about um, from a capacity building standpoint, but with real dollars, because they are expected to be everywhere all the time and they do so many things. So the idea that um, we can actually compensate them for those things is really critical. And I think that that's putting equity into action. So thank you very much for that. I do want to, um, I, I also want to just shout out to the comprehensive nature of this, that you're actually looking at the intersections of people's lives and making it a multi-generational approach. I think that's really, really commendable. I, um, I want to ask about um, the work being done around childcare as a business, because I know that the Washington Heights area specifically is a childcare desert. And so if that is a focus of yours, if there's a way for you to just at least mention and lift that up so that the other commissioners know what's going on there, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and Kathy, uh, see, I'll speak to that uh, specifically because, uh, like I said, I'm just leaving the Burma Center uh, opening here. Um, and so um, I, I actually also wear another hat helping in terms of capacity with our child care centers, uh, with Mom Perry, uh, with the Burma Center here uh, that I saw Mayor Binky at. Uh, and one of the things that uh, we're doing is making sure that uh, from cradle to career, we're supporting our community. Um, we know that there's a high... Um, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, folks in the community of color uh, within our city, uh, specifically within our pilot region, which was Washington Heights, but now we're actually moving into Meacham and then moving into other neighborhoods. And so we want to make sure that we're supporting our, our child care uh, centers. Why? Because, again, uh, if, if you're not supporting your future, then how do we get off the hamster wheel? How do we actually uh, create our future commissioners and our future mayors? Uh, and, and our future leaders. That, that's very important. It's, it's actually a way of preserving other culture that we know that we have and amplifying it um, and making sure it's sustainable. A lot of times we talk about sustainable of economics. Well, if we actually look at the root, it's actually in our kiddos. And it starts at a young age as, as from a modeling standpoint. So I can say that from a, a, a CCD or catalyzing community standpoint, when I think of education, I'm thinking about zero to career um, all the way through. Um, and, and that's a passion of mine. And, and honestly, that's been a passion that's come through with our leadership uh, and, the, and the leaders that are within uh, CCG. I also think, Kathy, you'll see it um, really highlighted even as we move into the health uh, area. Um, because it, I think, too, we do recognize that it starts at conception, right? Um, and, and taking care of children prenatal and then through development, right? So again, um, really from that cradle to the grave <laughs> uh, concept is really important to us. We do look at a continuum of uh, education and academic readiness and economic readiness. And Aki, I'll say one thing. One thing, uh, a lot of times we focus on childcare, but I will also want to look at our seniors. Um, I was actually just talking to, uh, again, I call them an elder statesman, and I was talking about reimagining and dreaming. And, and making sure that our seniors also are able to live in dignity and be and play a role in this. So we have these really cool bookends of basically those that are uh, even before conception, looking and making sure we're doing family supports all the way through, and then making sure that our seniors also again dignity, 
being able to dream, um, being able to see basically the transformation that's actually happening before our eyes, um, and, and honestly passing down their wisdom so we can consistently learn and continuously improve. Okay, Commissioner Morris, I think you had your hand up and then Commissioner Blood has her hand up. Thank you, Mayor. Oh. Um, so first I just wanted to say that I have been following the village since I was about 10 years old <laughs> and I'm proud to see that it's actually coming to fruition. Um, and secondly, I was just wondering how do we make sure that the resources and the efforts of the village stay within the village? Like, how do we make sure that outside people don't come in and take advantage of the resources and we don't get a part of that? Absolutely, great question. I will say the, the cohort anchors, the residents, they have the power. They have the power. We, we are, we are in, not in control of this work. We, this work is fully, fully driven by the voice of residents. And we, we're, we're really practicing lifting voice into action. That's what this work is really about, is creating a, a systematic mechanism for turning voice and aspiration into concrete, sustainable actions. Commissioner, Thank very you. good question. Um, are there any other commission questions at this time? Uh, Vice Mayor Katie Durris. Thank you. Um, the scope of this is so broad and covers so many areas from education, childcare, economic development, small business development, neighborhood development. It, it's so huge. And I realize that these are all real needs in our community. This amount of money seems like a drop in the bucket when it comes to addressing all of that. And so I'm wondering if you could share with us that 2030 vision via email so that we can get a better idea of what specific actions will take place to help impact all of these things. Um, it's just because it's so broad, I don't want it to be spread so thin. That, that we can't advance on anything. Um, that's always my concern is just spread, spreading financial and, and human resources too thinly, if that makes sense. So any kind of documentation or data that you can share with us would be very helpful to see how this will un unfurl over the next several years. Absolutely. And I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that, Katie. Uh, we will have a, a, a document. I've actually been working on that. For, so this year was actually technical feasibility. And so one of the reasons why we piloted it within Washington Heights is because we're dealing with about 2,800 homes. And we knew that this has to spread in, across our entire city. But we had to actually, if we're going to talk about all these different disparities, we had to actually go small enough in scope to be able to touch all of them, but within reason, and then actually again build capacity to continue the work and so uh i actually am uh landing the plane on said document so uh stay tuned i'll, I'll make sure that you get that in your hands um so you can see different mechanisms and structures and honestly resources uh that we're actually looking at and actually are, are in play as we speak absolutely and to that point we we actually this is a request as a match to uh senate appropriations a Senate appropriations request that we have in that is advanced at 1.5 million. Uh, we're looking at leverages, uh, philanthropic leverages between three and six million um, just to get us going. So we're being very strategic about diversifying um, the resources and support to this work, um, both in, in, in capital and uh, human capacity as well. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Are there any other commission comments or questions? Um, whether it's this um, catalyzing community giving, BCU, United Way, any of the other groups that are presenting tonight, um, and I don't expect an answer at this moment, but um, like, how are we going to track the return on investment? Um, you know, if we're giving a million and if you if you're getting a million and a half dollars and you give training like job training or whatever to five people, I mean, what? How are we going to um, 
make sure that there is that return on investment, whether, and I don't care what the project is, but I mean, I think Rebecca, this is directed at you more than anyone else. Um, you know, that's a lot of money and I don't want to be kind of looking five years down the road going, gosh, that was a huge waste of dollars. And whether that's, again, the, the community giving or refer to refurbishment of McCamley Plaza Hotel and whatever iteration that becomes. Um, people have a lot of good ideas and a lot of good intentions. And I just wanna make sure that, that any ARPA dollars that come from the city for these programs are, um, we get something for them. Sure, I'll Hi. go in uh, real quick over 30 seconds. Uh, from a catalyzing community giving standpoint, all of our work is grounded in evaluation and impact because frankly, uh, the community, from what I hear in the community conversation, cannot afford to go back. It has to go forward. It's not even for me about the, the numbers, it's about seeing people's lives actually transformed and people succeeding. And so uh, that's the charge. So yes, we're working with, you know, Upshot Institute and, and we have our own evaluators actually doing surveys. So we make sure that again, our work is grounded in data, uh, grounded in continuous improvement. Um, again, for you guys, uh, but honestly for the people. Absolutely, and we are looking at um, extrapolating the BIPOC community and looking at 1% increase annually into um, the, the local uh, economy, at, uh, participation into the local economy. So we are looking at some really critical uh, and strong data points to be able to report back. What is that return on investment? What did that investment actually lead to? Did it lead to 1%? of this population now onboarding and becoming actively engaged into our local economy, therefore increasing our local GDP, therefore supporting a revitalization uh, across the board. Thank you. Rebecca, Thank I think you, Commissioner turn Sophia. You. So noted. <laughs> um, I mean, the federal government is going to make us report on most of that, but certainly we will work with any and all community partners to make sure we're tracking the return on investment. So thank you very much, Commissioner Sophia. I appreciate that.